second kings chapter 5 from verse 1 through 14 now naaman the captain of the host of the king of syria was great man with with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper and the syrians had gone out by companies and he had brought away captives out of the land of israel a little maid and she waited on naaman's wife and she said unto her mistress first three and she said unto her mistress would god my lord were with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of israel the king syria said go go to and go to i will send a letter unto the king of israel and he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment and brought the letter to the king of israel same now the letter to the king of israel unto thee behold i have therewith sent naaman my servant to thee and thou mayest recover him of his leprosy verse 7 and it came to pass when the king of israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said am i god to kill to make alive that this man doth send unto me recover a man of his leprosy therefore consider i i pray you and see how he seeketh quarrel against me verse 8 let's read together and uh, and it was when elisha the man of god had heard that the king of israel had rent his clothes and sent to the king saying wherefore as thou rent thy clothes let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel so naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of elisha and elisha sent a messenger unto him saying go wash in jordan seven times and thou flesh shalt come again to thee and thou shalt be clean but naaman was wrought and went away and said behold i thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the of his god and strike his hand over my over the place and recover the leper and not up now puffer the rivers of damascus better than the waters of israel may i not wash in them and be clean so he returned and went away in the rich and his servant came near and spake unto him and said my father if the prophet had bid thee to do something great thing withest thou not have done it how much rather then when he said unto thee wash and be clean and then when he went down and dipped himself seven times in jordan according to seven times in jordan according to the saying of the man of god his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child and he was clean may the lord bless the reading of his word sit down on your enemy's head as you shout a shout of victory i thought you were shouting it not to me uh, today's service is what i titled matter of urgency matter of urgency tell anybody i didn't hear you well i didn't hear you well it doesn't look like you are saying it because you want something urgent say it again say it again Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. I want to share with us on what I title from affliction to upliftment. I didn't hear you. Eh? Tell your neighbor from affliction to upliftment. 
If you are not vocal, you cannot take over. Shout it again. Say it again. Say it again. Maybe you can repeat it more better. One more time. Say it again. The louder it becomes. Say it again. Repeat it one more time. Repeat it again. Look at your neighbor and say, I am not afflicted. Say it again. Affliction is dangerous. Affliction means suffering. Affliction means persecution. Affliction means distress. Affliction means sickness. And affliction is dangerous. But before I address my topic at long, each time you hear the word of God, you must have faith that the word of God can change you. When you came this morning, you went direct to your seat and you sat down and you have confidence that your seat will not fall you. If you have confidence on your seat, that's how you should have confidence in the word. If you so much trust that seat that you are sitting on, that's how you should trust God that he can do all things. Can I say this? Anytime God raises up a deliverer, the devil is ready to kill anybody because of the deliverer. Do you know why your family is under attack? It's nothing else because of you. I didn't hear you well. Do you know the reason why your family is under attack? Why everything around you is on fire? It's because of you. When God lifted up Jesus as a deliverer, everyone around him started dying because the enemy needed to get him. From two years downward, so many people died. Can I say this? Can I say this? They will fight, but they can't touch you. Ah, you didn't hear me well. You are not just a child that was born to die in Bethlehem. You are a child that God has raised up to rescue your family. There is a matter of urgency. And there is an emergency anointing to make you a match to break shackles. I thought somebody is shouting that amen well. When Moses appeared on the, screen, on the scene of life, the Bible said there was a killing of all Hebrew children. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? I prophesy. <laughs> Shaba, I'm going to come to my topic. I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy. Anyone around your life that have issued a decree because of you, they will eat their flesh and die your dead. Mantele superande Kampala tema rushata Lembrante koma ligaba. Sit down, let me talk a little bit. The Bible said that the mother of Moses placed him in a basket. In a basket. Mataya superata shitabala. Can I say this? I don't know who placed you in a basket. I don't know the evil basket they have placed you in. You didn't hear me well. There are some times where there are storms around your life that the devil will raise up people to put you in a place where you are not supposed to be. Moses was a major prophet. Moses was a man of glory. Moses was a man of power. But I found that the man, this guy Moses was placed in a basket. Can I say this? There are some of you here. You are president 
governors, senators, house of rep, end time financial apostle. But somebody has placed you in a basket. Can I prophesy? You are coming out of that basket. Brethren, a basket cannot retain water. A basket cannot sustain anything. I don't know where they kept you. <laughs> I don't know how they have positioned you. Every evil basket, wherever they have placed your basket, I don't know the family powers from your father's house, from your mother's side, that have placed you in a basket. Today, in Tapalata, today, you are coming out of that basket. See now, Moses' parents had no option. What I mean, no option. They don't know where to place the child. So the only last solution was to place the child in a basket. Brethren, you might be looking at a physical basket, but I'm not talking about that kind of basket. I'm talking about a position in your life where your father and mother have given up and they say this is how far we can take you every basket of destiny where they have kept you maybe in a one room apartment maybe you are just a secondarian maybe you, you are just a school south owner maybe a dropout maybe your condition today i prophesy i prophesy your destiny ever is about to see you Sit down, let me talk a little bit. Oh, Shabalata. Now watch, before I go into my message, watch, hear this. The Bible said, she positioned him in the river. Positioned him. I will talk about the rivers now. Positioned him. Now, contrary to what some Bible scholars will tell you that he was floating on the water. No, 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 no. He was not floating, he was stalked. He was in one position. What the mother of Moses did was that he stra she strategically positioned Moses with a Pharaoh daughter. The problem why you are not blessed, you are a floating basket. You are from one prophet floating to the other prophet. You are from one prophet floating to the other. You don't stay under one job. You must understand God will never bless a tree until the tree is planted. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law. And in the law does he meditate day and night. Then he shall be like a tree planted. If you are not planted, you cannot be watered. And if you are not watered, you cannot be fruitful. If you are not planted, you cannot be watered. And if you are not watered, you cannot be fruitful. Now, the daughter of Pharaoh, she was taking a bath. Hear this. Hear this. And please hear it well. Moses cried out from the basket. God told me, if you don't learn how to cry, your helpers will not hear you. I repeat it again. The Bible said, the righteous cry it out for deliverance. You must learn how to cry. What kind of cry? Not, not cry with tears. You must learn how to announce your arrival. Your presence. You are too quiet. That is why everything around your life is quiet. Whenever the, whenever the enemy box you to a corner, shout out, I am here. Oh, you didn't hear me well. Oh. Of every animal, the reason why God made you to have a voice, voice, and every animal have a voice. The problem is that you don't know their language. Whenever the dog do woo woo, he's speaking to, it is speaking to.
to its mates, its language. Oh, you didn't hear me well. You didn't hear me well. Moses cried out, I am here. Somebody you are about to cry out. Can I say this? Anytime your destiny helper hear your voice and your cry, they can never sleep until they come to you. To be voiceless is to be useless. To be voiceless is to be useless. We are not called to make noise. We are called to produce voice. Can I preach here? Can I preach to somebody here? Moses cried. Can I say this? If Moses had not cried out, the mother placing him in the basket would be useless. If a one month old baby knows how to cry for help, how much more you 57 years old? You didn't hear me well. You didn't hear me well. Moses was inside the basket and he was crying out, No, 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 no. I am not meant to be in the basket. I am meant to come out. My helper, where are you? Can I say this? Keep crying until your helper hear your voice. I have been talking, nobody heard. It is because your helpers have not heard. Because whenever your helper hear your voice, they will come. Thou callest in trouble, and I will answer thee. And the name of the God of Jacob shall defend thee. I will send thee help out of my own holy sanctuary can i prophesy somebody here your prayer request is about to be answered hey hey devil you can take my leg but you will not shut my voice now <laughs> am i talking to somebody here let everything that has bread praise the lord i might be in the basket but my mouth will not be closed <laughs> i might be in the basket but my mouth can never be closed can i say this even the deaf and the dumb can still make some noise even the rat can make some noise even the bed will make some noise can i say this make sure your mouth is not closed make sure you cry out and the bible said that potiphar's wife daughter heard the cry of the baby can i prophesy hear this brethren god can use anybody to help you i repeat anybody 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 can i say this whenever god wants to protect you and don't want you to die he will create Makabaya, he will create your secret place of hiding in the camp of your enemy you don't hear me well you are not getting me is somebody hearing me the people that are looking to kill you are the one that are defending you and protecting you can i prophesy even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death yea i shall fear no evil for thy rod and the staff they comfort me thou preparest a table in the midst of my enemy my name is moses but i'm in potiphar house the man that made decree that every hebrew child should die but yet i am in his midst and he has refused to touch me because god is about to raise your enemies to become your empires sit down am i talking here hear this whenever you are praying for helper stop looking for humble for believers or christians from the same church to help you that's your problem you want people that are Hebrew to come and rescue you? No! Sometimes when God wants to help you, He will cross over to the other side. Oh. Am I talking to somebody here? You didn't hear me well. Am I talking to somebody here? 
the bible says you will eat the riches of the gentiles if the way of a man pleases the lord he will cause his enemy to be at peace with me am i talking you might not like my face but you are giving me you might not like my face but you are sowing seed you might criticize me in the morning but you accept me in the afternoon you don't know why because whenever i cry a destiny ever will show can i say this your cry cannot be in vain sit down hear what god said to me anytime the righteous cry and help us show forth anytime you cry and help her appear the reason why there is no helper is because you are not crying in the basket watch this when you read down in exodus 3 down what he said and the child grew <laughs> can i say this you cannot continue to stay in the basket you will have grown the basket huh? oh did he hear me well some people are expecting you to be in your baby's cord you are you can't be in the baby's cord forever that's the problem with so many folks that knew me they come and say ah, brother Kazin, i used to know you before ah uh, uh, pastor joshua i knew you in ibadan i say you do you don't know the one you saw on, you are i mean you you, you are seeing now the one you saw in Ibadan is different from the one you are seeing now. I have outgrown my basket. You cannot see me in a manger. I am no longer in a manger. I have outgrown the basket. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, 10 years ago, you were in the basket. Foundational problem. Spirit of rise and fall. Can I say this? When the anointing come, in the presence of your enemy, in the palace of your enemy, you will grow. Ah! The only way to give the devil technical knockout is to be in the house of your enemy and you are growing adding weight and adding color growing in stature growing in wisdom growing in favor and they can do nothing and they are using their sword to protect you elephants don't fast to be big it is in their dna to be big ladies and gentlemen you are not made to be in the basket don't go to the basket to look for me i have left the basket oh you didn't hear me well i said i've left the basket shapanta have left the basket shapanta have left the basket Hey, to my latter, I've left the basket. Huh? Sapata, somebody is growing out of that poverty. Wait, the basket can be poverty, but you're growing out of poverty. The basket can be cancer. You're growing, you're growing out of cancer. Can I say this? Thought your beginning might be small, but your latter end shall greatly increase. Sit down. I'm laying foundation. Watch this. When they brought the child to this princess, she looked at Moses and hear what she said. She said, this is one of the Hebrew child. There was nothing written on the child that is an Hebrew child. Do you know why? As the child began to cry out, the tongue of the child produced the tears and the language of the Hebrew. You don't understand. She heard the cry of the child and she knew the tongue. You don't get me. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Your culture and your location and tradition is attached to your tongue. That's why they call it your mother tongue. And that's why when a Ghanaian speak here, you will know this is a Ghanaian talking because of the mother tongue. If a Nigerian is talking, you know this is a Nigerian. If a typical Yoruba man is talking, there is a way he speaks and you know this is a Yoruba man talking. This is an Hausa man talking. That's how it is. And when she heard the child cry out, she knows how the Hebrew used to cry or their tongue look like. And she said, 
this is an Hebrew child. Can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Whenever you want to cry out, don't cry out in your in a copied language. Cry out in your mother's tongue. Ladies and gentlemen, our tongue is not from where you are, from Nigeria. We are made from heaven. And every time you want to cry out, cry out in tongue. Am I talking to somebody here? Ladies and gentlemen, your empires will not come until you start speaking in tongues. You didn't hear me well. When you want to cry out, cry out in tongue. Elata, elata, shabalata. I prophesy wherever your empires are, they are coming for you. Sit down. Sit down. I begin to study the reason why they say Moses was a stammerer was not because he, he was a born stammerer. That's by my analysis. It was because Moses began to learn the language of the Egyptians. And whenever you begin to speak a language that is not your own, you will not be fluent in the language. Oh, you didn't hear me well. You didn't hear me well. You didn't hear me well. Although you know how to speak it, but you cannot be fluent. So because he was an Hebrew child by tongue, but by speaking, he was speaking an Egyptian language. So he was not fluent in speaking the language. So sometimes when he's presenting himself, his camera. Ah. Okay. Our scripture now. That was a form of affliction. That was an affliction. But was Moses uplifted from his affliction? Yes. In 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1, let's read. Now Naaman, a captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable because by the Lord had given him deliverance unto the Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Who is Naaman? The meaning of Naaman simply means beauty, pleasantness, beauty, or beautiful, pleasantness, beautiful, pleasantness. Naaman was an army general. When you see the word captain in those days, it means a general. And not just a general, but a right hand man to the king of Syria. Who is Naaman? A man of valor. Who is Naaman? A mighty man. Who is Naaman? A skillful general with a sword. In fact, by the theologic, theological account, they said Naaman fought violently against the Israelites during those days that through his violent and mighty skill commanding uh, war strategy they were able to defeat of Naaman and that was when the Syrian went into a war with the Israelites and they defeated the Israelites and now when they then defeated the Israelites to show you they took captivity so many people Naaman very powerful general very very respected very respected when Naaman is moving all other generals had to bow because he was a right hand man to the president in other words by the way I see it he was like a vice president in, in the nation. The president will do nothing except he discuss with Naaman. Because the Bible said the Syrian got victory because of the mighty violence of, of Naaman. But there was something wrong. 